Okay, it's mid-February, so it's time to plan for my garden for 2023. So today I'm going to share that plan with you. I'm also going to assemble a mini greenhouse that I'm going to put inside my house. And then I'm also going to start some seeds that need to be sown indoors so that they're ready to transplant when the ground warms up outside, probably early May. In some of my research, I have learned that I actually live in a microclimate. I live in Southwest Washington in the Columbia River Gorge. I'm at about a thousand feet above sea level. So there are a lot of different factors that play into what my garden season is, when I can put things outside, and even just what my, um, what my actual season is. It's very short here. It gets hot, it's dry, um, but it's so different. I go, I go down the hill and it could be 10 degrees warmer or cooler depending on the time of year. Um, I have snow up here and I drive down <laughs> for a meeting and I've got snow on my car and they don't. So it's very different, just even a mile or two down the road just because of my elevation changes. So what I've learned is that um, spring comes late, it's cooler, which means I'm gonna need to keep things indoors longer. Last year I put things out in April, it was way too early. So I really need to wait to move things outdoors or direct so until probably May. That's probably the right time for me. So I'm trying to be patient, but I also wanna make sure that I have starts that are large enough so that when I move them outside, they're strong enough and they, they take off quickly because my growing season is so short. I have not successfully had tomatoes the last couple of years. I've had a lot of green tomatoes, but they have never ripened. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna be putting my, my tomato seeds in today so that hopefully by the time May comes, they're pretty significant and then they maybe, I will get some ripe tomatoes this year. What do you know? So anyway, so thinking about the microclimates, I look at the seed packets, it's, and I know they're trying to be helpful and they show the little map with, this is the US map um, of your zone and when it's recommended to plant things if you were going to do a direct sow outside. And for me, I need to be looking at the late dates. So this is arugula, so probably you shouldn't plant this until July, which seems so late, right? But I need to follow those directions. So it's really important as you're thinking about your garden, understanding what is your zone. Don't just look at the little band. It does take some trial and error. And hopefully this year, um, by being patient and waiting for the warmer months at the end of the recommendation, that I'm, I will have some success. So anyway, so I'm gonna share with you what I am going to be planting this year. It's, I have to say this, so I'm in my art studio, right? And the one reason I wanted to be in my art studio is that my garden is right outside that window. So as I'm mapping things out, I mean, it's raining out today, I can actually stand up and make sure that my scale is appropriate, that I'm not putting too many things in, and it's really nice to be able to go out there and stay dry. So having the inspiration of the garden right there is great. And plus this is a great desk and it's nice to be able to spread things out. All right, so let me talk you through my garden. And I'm not gonna go into great detail because this is, you all have to do your own plan, right? So, but I have it all color coded. Um, I am a project manager, so I like to have a plan. But um, I have a variety of things that I'm gonna be putting in the garden. Again, this garden is all going to be raised beds. It's going to be um, I have some galvanized raised beds. I have um, green stalks. I have two of those. I have some Dollar Tree planters, um, those stackable planters, and I also have grow bags. I have seven gallon and I have 20 gallon grow bags that I got on Amazon. So today I'm going to be starting planting some seeds that are gonna be um, beefsteak tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, broccoli, bell peppers, hot peppers, four varieties, and some Brussels sprouts. Now the rest of the things I'm going to be direct sowing and it's going to be things like carrots, zucchinis, yellow squash, um, a bunch of greens are going to be in my green stock. And green stock number one is going to be my greens, radishes and beets, um, spinach and kale. And in my second green stock, I'm going to do pull, um, bush beans, excuse me, and then some sugar snap peas because I don't like shelling peas, but I love sugar snap peas. So that's going to be in one. 
And then in a couple of other, the larger grow bags, those, um, those 20 gallon grow bags, I think I said 10, but it's actually 20 gallon grow bags. I'm gonna plant all of my squashes. So in one is going to be acorn squash, butternut squash in another, spaghetti squash, which was really successful last year, but I was a nervous Nelly. I was so worried about deer stepping on them because they kept coming in and eating the zucchini flowers. So um, I'm gonna be putting some spaghetti squash in again. And then I had, um, I saved the seeds from a carnival squash. It was wonderful. And so I saved the seeds and I'm going to try planting those or there was an organic squash. So that's what I'm going to be putting in this garden right out here. And then in my raised beds, which are what I used last year, it's going to become my herb garden. And I'm really excited about this because I had some herbs in there. I had some oregano and basil last year and some sage and they did great. And it was so fun to be able to go out and just snip some things and add them to, um, as I was cooking. So, I'm going to be increasing that and also these are deer proof like I plant, I'm only putting things here that I know the deer won't munch right I hope we'll see so I'm going to be planting dill sage tarragon thyme oregano cilantro parsley basil and peppermint so my intention is to put to direct sow those on May 1st and then I have some garlic that Becky gave me that I need to get that out now. I don't know, it's probably too late, but I'm gonna be planting that. And then um, I'm gonna be doing some chives, green onion, and yellow onions. So I'm excited about that. Just having a place where I can go out there and just harvest things will be so fun. Um, and then in on the south side of this barn, it has great, um, great sun exposure because it's on the south side of the barn. I have four galvanized beds that I'm gonna put there. And I'm going to be putting sunflowers and marigolds and zinnias and dahlias. So I'll direct sow those seeds in, in um, May. And actually, I'm going to probably put some zinnias in. Um, I'm going to start some of those today, too, just because I may need to do a variety. So I'm going to do some seed starts, and then I'm going to also do some direct sow. I saved some seeds from last year, so I have a lot of seeds, so I'm going to try that. So that is what's going on outside. All right, so now we're gonna start assembling this. So this is just a simple mini, well, four-tier mini greenhouse, grow house. It's about 24 inches by 18 inches, so pretty small footprint. Um, I got this at one of my local stores, and I'll try to find something similar on Amazon for you if you're interested in this product. And again, I just wanna encourage you, I mean, I, you don't need a lot of space to be able to have something like this. This, for reference, I have just this simple doormat, which is gonna protect my floor. This is about as much space as I'm gonna give it. Anyway, it should be adequate for the number of seeds that I'm gonna be starting. Um, so now I get the fun of putting this together. <laughs> All right, so let me show you these cute little grow lights I got. I got these on Amazon. Um, I can link them below. There, um, it says an app grow light because there's actually, yes, there's an app for it. These are smart grow lights that I can um, set a timer. I can use my phone, uh, the app on my phone to be able to turn them on or off. So let me unbox them with you. I have some zip ties. And I did actually ask David to make a, an extra support for the top shelf because there wasn't that, it wasn't missing, it just they didn't have it. I needed a center support so I could put a grow light on the top shelf. So David just cut a piece of wood for me so that I can um, attach um, a grow light to the top. All right, so each box comes with two grow lights. Let me just take some of this packaging.
All right, let's see. Oh, these are cute. So, so these are 12 inches. And since the, the shelves themselves are 23.1 inches, I figured I would put them in the center and they would be adequate. If I really wanted to, I could have two and do them you know, straight across, but I figured this is probably enough. So let me just take these apart. Okay, so there's no, there are no instructions other than just how to adjust the mode, but not really how to install them. That's okay. All right. So we have, okay, so here are the grow lights. And because I'm gonna be putting one on each shelf, they're connected through this wire, but I can just separate this. And so I don't wanna to go too crazy to separate them because I don't want a lot of extra. So I'm just going to assemble, I'm gonna put one up and then I'll, I will split this apart and then assemble the next one. But let's plug them in and see how bright they are first before we get to, let's make sure they work before I get too excited. Okay, so this has a USB. All right, let's plug this in. All right, I'll put this away from the camera so I don't blind you with all of their brightness. So let's see. Whoa, <laughs> those are really, those are really nice and bright. Okay, so that's, so let's see, we can, there's a timer. What does this do? Oh, we can reduce and we bring it back up. Wow. Those are super, I feel like I'm holding some lightsabers or something. All right, those are great. All right, let me unplug it. Oof, now I can't see anything. I just see the light strips. And if you do too, I'm so sorry. All right, so let's get these assembled or installed, I should say. Really no assembly required. Now they did come with, they did come with these little sticky back um, foam kind of things, but because these rods on the on the greenhouse are not flat. That won't work. It could work on the board at the top, but I also want to be able to remove them at the end of the season and not have to deal with this kind of stuff. All right, so these guys just have this this cord that's together and it's it isn't harming anything electrical. They're just I just have to peel them apart. All right, so I took a minute and did a little bit of cable management. That's what I love about me being married to an IT guy. He always is really good about like, hey, why don't we you know, move the wires and cables? So I took a minute and did some zip ties. So now the cables are out of the way. So now I'm going to go ahead and load all of the, the little trays with the soil, bring them in, and then we're gonna start planting our seeds. Now that I have everything sorted as to which seeds are going to go into which tray, I'm gonna go ahead and start. These are gonna be tomatoes, and this one's gonna be cherry tomatoes, and this one's gonna be beef, beef steak. And let's see, these are, what? These are fairy morse um, seeds, and these are actually from, these are actually from Dollar Tree. And I like to save my seed packets so that way next year I know, okay, this brand did not work and this one did. Oh, these are so tiny. Whoa, there are lots. Okay. Probably more than I need, but that's okay. Just go ahead and put a couple in. I don't want to waste 
waist them either, just in case I decide I need to direct. So that's probably enough. Okay, let's cover you guys up. Just lightly cover with the soil. And then my little cherry tomatoes. I think about, I don't know, maybe four or five seeds in each cell. I don't want to waste them because I'll have to thin them out later. Let me have a little bit more. I don't want to squish them too much. If you have any tips on how to do this, if I'm doing something wrong, tell me now. Okay, let's pop those away. Again, then I'll have extras for in case I need to direct sew. And here are beef steak tomatoes. All right, I am super excited that th we got the seeds planted today. They are all nestled snugly in their little grow house. We have the grow lights up, super excited. So now the hard part for me, this was easy. The hard part is being patient. I just need to be patient and wait for May when I said I need to wait. It's not gonna, even if it's sunny in April, I need to wait until May to put these, these babies out there. So. Um, I can't get patience on Amazon. Too bad, right? So anyway, I'm going to take you along with me as these seedlings grow, as I up-pot them, and all of that process. Hopefully, I have some success with some of these seeds, which may have been a little older. I don't know if they're going to germinate. So we'll see. Um, anyway, and so I'll also take you along with me as we fence in the garden. We haven't done that yet because it's winter. So we'll fence in the garden and then when we start to fill in, um, we'll assemble the grow bags, the green stalks, and the galvanized tubs. So I will take you along with me as we fill those and then also start planting those seeds and we put in our herb garden. So lots to, lots to do, lots of things to look forward to because that's not until May. Anyway, I'd love to hear what your plans are for your garden this year. What are you looking forward to growing again? Maybe what are you looking forward to trying something new? And if you're from a different area in the country, I'm in Southwest Washington, I'd love to hear what you're growing that's unique to your area. So anyway, I really appreciate you joining me today and I hope you're doing well. And until next time, everyone, take care. <music>